Welcome back, it's Lyndon from Visionary Fire, back with another luscious tutorial. Hold on, my client's calling me. Lyndon, the deadline is in one hour! If it's not done, you're fired! One hour, please. Ah, client. All right, let's have a look at what we're gonna be creating. So the part about this that's so amazing and makes you want to run around your house naked is that it's procedural. So it automatically updates to whatever footage you have. So while the big studios are wasting their life and the clients get angry because they're placing one lighting element at a time, well maybe they should watch this tutorial and learn how to do it procedurally. And check this out. No, not that. I'm talking about it has real 3D lighting. It reflects on the wrinkles of the clothing. How the hell do we do that? It also has procedural color so you can try out different creative looks. And there's so many different use cases for this lightning effect. Just like in the last tutorial where we did the smoke dissolve effect, I told you I'd make a tutorial on the lightning if you guys requested it in the comments. I am a man of my word. Uh -huh. Let's drag our footage into the new composition icon right here. It creates a new composition with the right settings. And here we keyed out the character. So I'm not gonna do keying in this tutorial. If yours doesn't have a green screen, you'll have to do a roto point is you need a transparent background like this. So this tutorial is mostly made for intermediates, but I'm gonna do the best I can to help the beginners as well. Um, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pre-compose the footage. This is always, we always wanna do this for procedural projects. So I'm gonna duplicate this layer. So we're gonna hit Control D or Command D for our Mac people. I'm gonna call this Lightning. By the way, I just hit Enter and rename it. All right, so on this Lightning layer, we're gonna go to the effects and presets and uh, 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 I see what you did. You went for the advanced lightning effect. You think you're so advanced. I just want you to go crawl into a dark corner because we're not going to use that. We're going to use find edges and we're going to apply this to the lightning layer. And aha, doesn't this look like lightning? Uh, wow, Lyndon, good job. All right, we got some work to do. So let's click invert. And now you can see we have these white lines. It's looking a little better. And we just want the line at the very edge. So what we're going to do is apply a fill effect and we're gonna make this white. And if we put the fill effect before the find edges, then the find edges is only gonna find the very edge, just like that. Now the key thing here is we do not want the transparent background. I'll show you why in just a second. So we're gonna use a solid composite effect to fill in the transparency with the color of our choice. So let's use black. By the way, I'm in quarter resolution. I'm gonna go to full here. And we're done, look, lightning. No, it's not. So let's apply the fractal noise. Man, if only I had a dollar for every time I use a fractal noise effect, Jeff Bezos would be kissing my feet. And I could probably afford maybe like half of a Nuke subscription. So how this is gonna work, we're gonna choose the blending mode as multiply. And you can see this is gonna subtract sections of the line when we add a bunch of contrast. Aha, look at that. I'm gonna turn it off multiply so we can see the fractal noise. I wanna change the complexity down to one the noise type to linear. All right, let's change the blending mode back to multiply. So now it's gonna take away sections of the line. So you can see how this is gonna start looking like lightning. Doesn't it feel so good to satisfy the curiosity? Now this is super cool, but we are not at the funnest part yet, but we're gonna dive deep into some of these parameters and I promise this will be so useful for all of your After Effects projects, just watch. So check this out, when we animate the evolution Oh, now we have some cool stuff coming on. So we can animate the evolution with an expression. So we hold Alt on the keyboard or Option if you're a Mac and then click the stopwatch right here. That's gonna open up the expression. Oh my God, it's code and math and expressions. I think I'm having a panic attack. Guys, listen, calm down everyone. It's just a simple expression. So we're gonna type time times 1000, okay? So this, so this is gonna make this value can continuously animate. So as we play it, you're gonna see that the anim evolution is gonna animate just like that. So now you guys might not be completely skeptical that this is gonna turn out to be lightning somehow. I'm gonna turn down the brightness a little bit because there's too much white here. And then we can also change the scale. So look, increase the scale with some longer lines. And we could also play around with a random C if we want some 
flickering and stuff so it feels a little bit more like electricity. I did a lot of that. We get a wiggle expression here. Okay, so we can put this on the screen blending mode and you can see how it's gonna overlay on top of the footage. So we're gonna play with the look of this, but first, how do we make the lightning not just on the edge? It's just on the edge. How do we make some on the actual body? So what we're gonna do is duplicate this lightning layer. So we click Control D. And let's solo this layer so we just see this one. Let's turn off all the effects except this fill here. And what we can actually do is use a simple choker. All right, let's choke this bit. Oh shoot, that sounded kind of messed up, guys. I'm so sorry. So um, it's not choking very much, even though we did 100. So what we can do is add a fast box blur before the simple choker. And the more we blur this, the more it's gonna choke. So now we can turn on our effects, see it with everything else. And now you can see we have two layers. So there's one inner and one outer. And obviously we wanna change the fractal noise random seed here in the evolution option. So it's in a different, the fractal noise is in a different random position. Okay, and we can repeat this process to make some more lightning in the very middle. All right, next problem. You guys guess how we're gonna solve this. How do we make this line not exactly on the edge? Well, you guys could never guess what effect we're about to apply. Turbulent displace. Guys, don't make me sing the song. Don't, no, we're not singing the song today. Don't make me do it. Ah, oh, you guys just had to do it, didn't you? So you can see here, this is taking the um, lightning off the edges, making it look much more organic. So we're gonna turn the amount up to 100. So we want kind of a lot of distortion just like that. And we're gonna copy this turbulent displace to the other uh, lightning layers as well. So we're gonna hit Control C, go to the other lightning layer, hit Control V, and we can obviously go to the evolution options, change the random seed so it's a different look on the turbulent displace. The same thing for the other layer. Boom. So now we have all this crazy lightning stuff happening. All right, so listen guys, our next objective is to make this not look like bull crap, okay? We're gonna make it look sexy as my muscles. What, why is everyone leaving the tutorial? No, come back, come back. Ah! We're gonna make this look like lightning. The first step is we need to pre-compose these three lightning layers. So now all those three layers are in one layer. We can do the blending mode as screen. So we're gonna jump inside of this lightning layer. And the first thing we're gonna do is add some detail so it starts to feel like lightning. So we're gonna go to layer, new, adjustment layer. And we're gonna apply our beloved turbulent displace. And the key here is we wanna turn the size down and turn up the complexity till we have that perfect amount of lightningness. And one thing you can actually do is apply the advanced lightning effect to kind of see what the lightning's supposed to look like and try to mirror that with the turbulent displace. All right, that's looking pretty good. So the key thing is we're gonna animate this really fast to have that energetic electricity look. So we're gonna hold Alt, click the stopwatch on the evolution. Don't worry, Christians, if you're watching, there's no monkeys here. No, just kidding, we love our Christians here. So let's type in time times, and we're gonna do this like a lot, so like 2000. 2000, so that's gonna make it animate really fast. I am the fastest expression alive. Now check this out. One thing you can do to give it a little bit more detail is duplicate this turbulent displace effect. A lot of people don't know this, but you can actually double click on the effect here, and in the compositing options, you can open this up and turn down the effect opacity. Now you're gonna see like two layers of turbulent displace. That's the compositing options down here. Ninja techniques. All right guys, pause, time to spin the wheel to see if we do a giveaway, all right? Let's spin the wheel. You know what? Looks like I'm lucky this time. Just kidding guys, if you do appreciate this training, please don't forget to drop a like. Oh, this lightning is looking good. There's just one problem. There's no lusciousness. There is no color and no glow. I'm having withdrawals. Please give me some juicy, luscious glow right now. Guys, this is the funnest part, adding the glow. So we're back in the main composition here. We have our lightning layer. Now there's actually one problem, is that there's this black stuff on the lightning. Now what the heck is this? We're on the screen blending mode. How is the screen blending mode creating this black stuff? It's because we are in 32 bits per channel and it allows colors to get darker than black. So that's why it's darkening on the screen blending mode. See, if you hold Alt and click this number, you can see that it's gonna go away because on eight bits per channel, it can't go darker than black. 
So we're gonna, we do wanna go to 32 bits per channel here for the color, but let me show you a cool trick to get rid of this. So if you apply the levels effect to this layer, and then you can clip the black. So right here, we turn this on, boom, it gets rid of that darker than black. So let's go ahead and add the color. And we do this simply by adding a tint effect. So we're gonna change the map white to, let's try blue, because we're so generic. What if I did pink? Wouldn't that just make this tutorial just really weird? So now I'm gonna show you the deepest secrets for how you create a luscious glow. Now you're like, Lyndon, not everything's a secret. Well, luscious glow is a secret because it's not easily done. You're like, oh, just duplicate multiple layers of glow. No, it's not that simple, all right? Lusciousness is the most delicate, intricate beauty in the world. So we're gonna apply the glow effect. Before we play with these glow settings, the key here is you got to add an exposure effect. See, we're already doing really weird stuff. So, and remember, we're in 32 bits per channel here. It's just super important for this to make colors brighter than white. So we're gonna turn the exposure up to maybe like three or four. That makes it super bright. And we're actually gonna turn down the glow threshold to maybe 25. Now what, now what the glow threshold is, is it glows the darker colors. You can't do the threshold too low or the glow's gonna look really faded. And now we just need to turn down the intensity of the glow. Now the second trick is to add multiple layers of glow. The second layer of glow has to have a more broad radius. So we're gonna make this a lot more broad. So let's try maybe 75 and we're gonna turn up the intensity just a little bit. And then we're gonna duplicate this once more and this is gonna be an even more broad glow. So we're gonna do like 250 maybe and then turn up the intensity a lot, okay? Just like that, so we have multiple layers of glow. Now, guys, we have a serious problem that there's a very uneven distribution of the way this glow is happening. See, like over here, there's no glow, and over here, there's too much glow. Now, this is where the next ninja secret comes in for adding these luscious glows, all right? How you do it is we need to pre-compose this lightning layer, and we're gonna leave all attributes. That's gonna make a new composition, but leave all these effects in the original composition. So we're gonna click leave all attributes. It's Let's jump inside here. And what we're actually gonna do is darken the bright parts of this lightning. So to do that, we're going to duplicate this lightning layer and then, and then change the blending mode to subtract right there. So now it just subtracts itself. But the key thing is if we add a fast blur, fast box blur to the top subtract layer, and then we turn up the radius just a little bit, then the thick parts are gonna subtract more than the thin parts. So it's gonna even everything out a little more. So let me just show you what's happening here. So on this top layer, we have the blurred lightning. And you're gonna see if we blur this enough, the only thing that's gonna show is the thick parts. And the thin parts are gonna be blurred into oblivion. And then when we subtract, it subtracts the thick part. Okay, you can even add a levels effect and crush the blacks. So you know, it really only leaves the uh, thick parts. So now we can change the blending mode back to subtract. And we have some weird stuff going on. We're gonna turn the clip output black and white to on, on. Oh my God, E equals MC squared. Subtracting from the bright part. So now if we go back into our main composition, it's gonna even out the glow much more. So now that I darkened everything, we can turn up the exposure on the original layer here, make this really bright. So now you can see we have the glow on everything rather than just the, the really bright parts of the lightning. Boom, there we go, look at that. This glow is easier said than done. You guys aren't allowed to call it luscious unless it looks exactly like this. Oh my God, aren't you guys getting just so horny looking at this? So just one quick issue, it's going too far out the side the edges of the arm. So what we can do is copy the source and paste it into the um, lightning layer here we can stick it on the stencil alpha mode. And so it's not gonna allow the lightning to exist outside of this layer we just created. So the cool part is the way we created this, it just fits to the contours of the body shape. You can see here just going around the chest like that and the ear. All right guys, the part you've been curious about, how did we do the environment lighting, the real 3D lighting where it reflects on the wrinkles of the pants and his tie and his, um, you know what, let's just go ahead and get started. So how we do this is we duplicate the source again, hit Control D, and then we're gonna pre-compose this so it's in its own composition. We're gonna call this lighting. So I just chose the move all attributes option here. 
and we're gonna call this 3D lighting. So we jump inside this lighting composition. What we're gonna do is go to layer new solid, black, that's important for what we're about to do. And we're gonna apply the CC plastic effect. All right, you learn a new after effect effect every day. That's really hard to say, a new after effect effect. It always happens when you watch these tutorials by some geek, they always just go deep in the effects and pull out something you had no idea existed. It's like, what the hell is CC plastic? Well, it's similar to the CC glass, but it has its own cool advantages. So check this out. We go to the surface bump and choose the, our footage here. So it's the source. Ma ha ha. So this is going to be pretty cool. What we have to do is turn down the softness. So it really kind of captures the wrinkles on the pants and everything. And we can also brighten the, the solid layer a little bit. So I'm going to use that do that with a tint effect. I'm going to go to the black and just kind of, and so you can see that the CC plastic is creating this 3d lighting on the pants. Whoa, isn't that cool? So you can play with all the different settings down here, like the metal and stuff to create different looks for different types of materials You can play with the light angle come from different angles. What I think I'll do is add a wiggle expression to this light direction. So it's going to flicker like the lightning. So we're going to hold alt, click the stopwatch. It's going to add an expression down here. We're going to type in wiggle parentheses 20 comma 45. So that's just going to make the lighting wiggle around as though you know, the, the, the lightning is flickering from different angles. Nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply this. So what we have to do is go back to the main composition. What I'm going to do is copy this tent effect. And this is a cool trick. So if you go to edit, copy with property links, when you change this tint effect, it's going to change it on the light, 3D lighting as well. So we do edit, copy with property links, and we'll paste this on the 3D lighting. So now if we change the tint effect on the lightning to red, it's also going to change the, the tint effect here on the 3D lighting. Okay, so now we need the 3D lighting to only exist where there is lightning. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this lightning layer. I'm going to call this lightning map. So I'm going to delete all the effects except the levels. So we just see the lightning here, so it'll render really fast. And basically what we have to do is blur this and then turn up the brightness. So if we just do, um, you know, fast blur and then we go to curves and we can turn up the brightness just like this. And then we had to basically repeat this multiple times. So I'm going to do both of these effects, hit duplicate, put it at the bottom and then we just do fast blur a lot more. So this is a map for where this 3D lighting should exist. So on the 3D lighting, if we go to the track mat, turn um, luma mat, and it's important that we have the lighting map directly above the 3D lighting layer. So the luma mat knows which layer to choose. It's the layer directly above itself. So just like this, and now the problem is we need to put the 3D lighting on a screen blending mode. So it, it just brightens everything. Isn't that amazing how it's just reflecting on the wrinkles? I cannot get over this, holy crap. And color to be more intense, like you want it to be more blue, you can just add a hue and saturation effect to the 3D lighting layer, and then turn up the master saturation lighting layer to only um, exist where the footage is. So there's a cool button beside the track map called this little track map, this little track map button, and that makes it only exist where there is opacity. So it won't exist where there's no opacity. Oh my God, guys, look at this effect. This is the first time I've ever wanted to French kiss the pixels on my screen. Wow. It's really just the touches like this that separate the amateurs from the professionals who get paid a lot with this work. If the client just feels the detail and quality of your work, they will keep coming back and you could have one client that gives you hundreds of thousands of dollars in business. All right, guys, you can download the project file at visionaryfire.com, link in the description. I've had so much fun with you being creative with After Effects. My name is Lyndon Bracewell for Visionary Fire. 